Hey, so I'm going to provide a quick demo of the intraglacial snow asset that I've developed for Unity URP and HDRP. This is a v VFX graph asset. Uh, I've included five different prefabs showing different intensities of snow right here. We're looking at the blizzard prefab, but I've also included heavy, light, medium, and fine uh, variations. Uh, for the snow intensity. So first I'm going to quickly show you those different intensities um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the ability of this asset to uh, adjust to different situations that you might need for your game. So uh, right here we're at Blizzard. This one is heavy. You can see the snow is uh, coming down quite thickly but in this case in heavy snow circumstances you will see snow flurries and uh, quite a significant amount of turbulence uh, going on here as well with quite dense snowflake uh, coverage. Here this is medium coverage, um, and the snow is somewhat less turbulent, although still slightly turbulent. Um, and you can see uh, the snow mostly moving down with slightly less coverage. This is a light coverage setting when there is snowfall present, uh, but not a significant amount. And then finally we have the fine uh, snowfall setting, which you may not be able to see clearly here, but um, I'll just go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Uh, you do have the snow falling and um, it's, it's quite light, quite thin, um, and not too uh, opaque. So um, definitely gives that feeling of being in fine snow. Uh, so we'll quickly go over to the fine snow settings. Um, the first thing that you'll see is that we have a VFX follow main camera script attached to this prefab. Uh, this same script is attached to each of the different prefabs. Uh, effectively, this uh, script, you would click do follow uh, on this script in order to ensure that this particular prefab follows the position of your main camera so that you can um, have snow falling throughout your entire scene from the perspective of the camera. And the seconds between refresh controls at what rate the position of the snow prefab, at what rate is it updated? Um, so that's for performance reasons. So if you are moving quite a far distance between individual frames, you might want to bring that down. Um, but if you're not moving very much at all, you can bring that up. Now we'll take a look at the actual VFX parameters that are available uh, within this uh, asset. So actually we'll go ahead and switch over to, I think, uh, heavy snow for uh, an easier demonstration here. So here we have the heavy snow. Uh, you can see over here that I've exposed a variety of different parameters. Uh, they include color, flake size, initial speed, spawn rate per meter squared, that's in unity units, uh, lifetime, wind turbulence, air turbulence, flake opacity, spawn region, gravity, and fade in and out. Uh, so most of these are pretty self-explanatory. If you ramp up the flake size, then you'll start getting quite large flakes. And if you bring that all the way down, then you'll see that flake size goes way down as well. Um, so bringing that up can help to make your scene feel overall more snowy. Um, the initial speed determines the rate at which the, the snow is falling when it is spawned. So if you bring this up, you're going to see the snow coming down at a much faster rate. That's really useful for creating more blizzard-like environments. Um, or having snow falling in a particular direction like that. If you bring this down though, you'll see that the snow does fall, that's thanks to this gravity parameter, but falls at a much slower rate and may not even get to the level of the camera. Um, so depending on what you need for your project, this has all of that. The spawn rate per square meter allows you to determine how much, how dense the, the snow coverage is in your scene. Bringing that down causes less overall snowflakes to fall, which can increase your performance. Um, but Bringing that up does give you more of a, a snowier scene. We have the lifetime. Normally a value around four for a greater initial speeds works well. But if you are having a slower initial speed, you might want to bring that up so that the snowflakes do make it all the way down to the ground plane. Uh, the wind turbulence controls the uh, like sort of rate at which the initial speed is attenuated across a, a noise graph. Um, so bringing this up will cause the uh, initial speed to vary more greatly uh, over time, whereas bringing this down will cause it to vary less. And then the air turbulence is the actual 3D, uh, the effect of the 3D noise happening in this scene that's affecting the, uh, 
the forces acting on these individual snow particles. Bringing this up can cause the particles to go a bit crazy, so be gentle. Um, and bringing this down can cause the snow to have a bit of a less turbulent feel to it. Um, and bringing this all the way down would cause the snow to have no turbulence whatsoever, apart from the initial turbulence. That does feel a bit like rain to me, so I do prefer having some turbulence in here to cause the uh, snow to move around. And then the flake opacity does play a large role in the apparent density of the snowstorm. You can see when we raise that, it looks a lot thicker. If we bring this down, it looks much thinner. The spawn region is just if you want to increase the area over which the snowflakes fall. These are automatically culled in and out based on distance. Flakes closer than half a meter are culled out. Flakes farther than 10 meters are also culled out. So bringing this up can allow you to see snowflakes at a further distance. Um, but generally, you won't need to see snowflakes at that farther distance because they become quite small. Um, and so having the snowflake falling within a 30 meter square radius is pretty good. And then I would recommend adding some sort of fog uh, in the background to really sell that effect. And the last thing that we have here is the gravity setting, which controls the force of gravity acting on these. So bring that down or bring that more intense um, causes the snow to fall at a more rapidly accelerating pace. And then bringing that up causes the snow to fall at a more gradual pace. So those are the main features present in um, the VFX graph. Um, and yeah, uh, we have a demo scene here. I'll just hit play and it'll bring you through the different uh, shots within the uh, scene. And um, you'll be able to see that here. So that's the fine snow. Um, next up, you will be seeing the uh, light snow here. And then next will be the medium snow. That's this one. And then heavy is here. And then the next snow effect that we'll look at is the blizzard. These are all the same visual effect graph, just with the parameters modified to provide the um, apparent intensity there. This is back to fine again. Um, so that really shows the breadth of what this VFX graph is able to accomplish um, for your project. And um, you are also easily able to drag and drop in any of these different prefabs to meet your needs um, without having to customize anything yourself. All right, thanks for watching.